Ah, uh, yes. That music can only mean one thing. It is time, once again, for the exclusive film and video report. I'm Ghosty, joined, as I so often am on these occasions, by James Rana. Hello, Ghosty. Hello, Who's everyone. sporting a head of gray hair <laughs> I, I, I have, you know, working in radio has aged me. It has, and, uh, remarkably. I have aged overnight. And, uh, oh, my goodness. I thought I was bad. Well, you know. Listen. I'm a little older than you, so I can afford to have <laughs> the hair growing out of the ears and all that uh, fun stuff. But we are not here to talk about such things. No, we're not. We're here to talk about a TV show that you've never seen. <laughs> no, 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 you, no, no, you've no. seen clips. I, I, I have seen episodes of the show, but it's been a while. And you, you called me in because this is the most unusual kind of program that we do, where only one person that really knows That's the subject, true. and That's I, true. I just have That's to go true. off of instinct. You have to go off to instinct <laughs> and memory. But listen. The good folks at Shout Factory have put out the entire series of Route 66, which aired from 1960 to 64, starring Martin Milner and mm -hmm. uh, George Maharis. Yes. Now, to set the, the, the scene for this, there was a, a period in American television where there was an, a need to do something important yeah. with television. So we had things like Playhouse 90. We had TV writers like Patty Chayefsky oh, yes. and uh, and Rod Serling, and uh, and Sterling Siliphant, who's the guy who who he's the brains. Him and Herbert Leonard are the brains behind Route sixty six, which was an attempt to do. It, it it does follow two guys, but it's really sort of an anthology series. Every show is set in a different town, filmed on location. Mm -hmm. no, no backlots. No, we, they, these guys went on location and filmed these stories. And the only constant in the episodes are the two guys, uh, Buzz Murdoch, played by George Maharis. Buzz Murdoch w is sort of the tough guy from New York. Yeah. And Todd Stiles is the college grad who's a little more straight-laced, and he's played by uh, Martin Milner, who, of course, uh, had uh, you know screen success early on in, in The Sweet Smell of Success, that movie. Of course, yes. And then went on to star in Adam-12 on television. George Maharis uh, was, was on stage, and then he went on to a variety of TV roles himself. A, a very great actor. A very, great actor. Very well-respected New York actor. And a good singer, too. Yeah. He, had a, he had a music career, of all things. Versatility. There was a time you had to be versatile. Right, because you never knew when the other shoe was going to drop, and you could just go and, you know, do other things. Everything's changed. Everything has changed now. But this show was, was sort of based loosely on the beat generation. Yeah. Uh, that idea of... Of you know what I'm not gonna show up at work and work at my father's factory and and live that kind of life and live the kind of life he had. I'm going to take off and follow my wanderlust and see where the road takes me. You know, which is which is a concept that hardly anyone follows nowadays. <laughs> Maybe they should. Certainly, it's it's wish fulfillment for me to watch this show. You know, because I'd love to do that myself. You yeah. know. So basically, what happens is Todd Styles' father. The backstory for the show is Todd Styles' father. Uh, passes away and leaves him the Corvette. And he and his pal, Buzz Murdoch, set out on old Route 66, traveling America, and they go to a town every week, and they get jobs, and they sort of wrap themselves up, and they get involved in the you know whatever stories are happening in that town. Very, very much like, it's sort of like Kung Fu, but in a Corvette. <laughs> well, <laughs> it's... Mean, there's it, much more to it. <laughs> there's much more to it than that. <laughs> you need how... to see more of it, I think. And well, now... No, I remember the show. First of all, I just wanted to say, you know, from what the clips I've seen, because great shows like Route 66, we don't always see them on the K on, especially like yes. at night, because I just think they're just too good. Well, uh, I, I, there, I'll say this. Route 66 is an intense show. Brilliant guest stars. Right. Br I mean, unbelievable. I mean, setting aside uh, uh, Martin Milner who's wonderful in yeah. his role as Todd Styles. George Maharis, who's sort of like a Brando type. You oh. know, he was a method actor well, and he all came that. Out, he came, if I'm not mistaken, didn't he come out of the uh, um, actor studio? Yes, yes, yes. So like, yeah. he had Lee Strauss. Right, so he, he had, had all the, right. Very talented. So, and and what they do is, uh, you know, they, they go on, the, they're, they're heavy hitters to begin with. Yeah. And they wind up meeting, uh, you know, a, a bunch of actors playing these great roles, like you have Robert Duvall, You've got, uh, we mentioned Julie Noir, of course. She was on uh, several shows. And you played that. You played one of the clips in a wonderful yeah, performance. Yeah, and, and the writing is so great on the show. Yeah. The right, you know, it's not a show where you can be dumb and enjoy it. It's impossible. You've got to be somewhat bright to pick up on what's happening on Route 66 because the dialogue and the situations, because, for instance, you know, there's uh, an episode where they visit a, a Korean War veteran's home. 
and it's about Korean war war veterans and their problems yeah. in this uh, veterans hospital, which is a subject that no you one. wouldn't you you wouldn't see that now, and it was uh, uh, unheard of back then for you to even be on the air. It was just so soon. I have a question about the program. How do they do with award wise? You know, I'm not really sure. I, I'm assuming it it had to have been up for Emmys. It would be mm. a, a crime if it wasn't. I, I mean, th- there there's some impressive things about it. They do film on location. They're never on a back lot. These guys are going from town to town, and there are plenty of stories, you know, about yeah. people seeing, you know, the, the trucks pull up, and here comes Route 66 to our town. And they've managed to capture a, a vanishing America. It, it's it, parts of America that are no longer there, you know. And uh, that's one of the joys of watching the show is you get to see not the glamour of of the road, but you see almost the squalor, you the know, dirt. The, yeah, the right. Real, in a way, in a way, the show almost revels in it, you know, it's like grapes Showing, of wrath, kind right? Of. <laughs> right. <laughs> Showing real, you know, American grit. Now the thing was the as successful as the show was, uh, George Maharis had to leave the program. Well, and why? it was it was very controversial. He left after the third season, and they had to recast. Uh, well, they didn't recast. They just had another character come in. All right, because uh, the nature of the show, not only were the stories intense, but the filming of it was intense. Yeah, and George Maharis, God love him, he had to bear the brunt of you know any violence on the show. He was always fighting someone, diving into the ocean, diving into you know this, that, and the other, jumping on from roof to roof. And I'm watching it. No stunt double. I mean, this guy's doing all this stuff. And he had gotten some kind of infection and had uh, gotten a shot from some crazy doctor and uh, contracted hepatitis C. Wow. And he was out for a good stretch of episodes and then came back. And they put him right back into the mix of, you know, jumping in the freezing water and all this sort of stuff. And his doctor said to him, you can't do this. This is not, you know, you're going to die if you keep this up. So George Maharis had to walk away from the show and he didn't want to do it. And unfortunately, when something like that happens, there's, yeah. you know, the, the fan magazines are all about, you know, oh, George is too big for his britches. He's got a big head. He wants to do movies. And he did do movies as, as so did Martin Milner. Um, and they got Glenn Corbett in to play another character called Link Case, I think. And uh, he was a Southerner, and it was a different vibe between those two. It's hard to to denigrate Glenn Corbett's performance, and why would you? You know, I mean, he's it's, that's not a situation that you really want to be put in. No, as an actor, you're, he's a professional. He's a professional. You're glad for the gig, yeah. But it's, at the same time, you're replacing somebody who was really, really popular. It's difficult. The show must go on. And right. I'm very, you know, amazed by a program like this in the '60s. The you know, the budget allowing them to shoot on location. Well, it had to be an incredibly expensive show. Yeah, you know, everything is real. You know, you're you're shipping the actors out to Podunk, you know, Missouri, for for a week, and and they are cranking these things out in a week. That's another thing too. There are so many episodes, and as I said, you know, uh, yeah. Shout Factory just released this big box set. You can get the entire series from start to finish. And back then, you know. It's not like today, where I think it's like tw- twenty-two episodes as a season. Yeah, it's like twenty-two to twenty-six. Episodes. Right. It was like thirty-six in oh, nineteen sixty. So there's hundreds and hundreds of these episodes. So now, now that you have it, the question: um, What are any uh, special features? Anything that's uh... well, there's 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 a, um, a symposium from the nineties with um, Burt Leonard, the producer, and George Maharis is there, and a bunch of other guys. It's like a half hour long thing. Uh-huh. There's a, there's a documentary on the Corvette. Um, wow. Oh, of course. Well, th- th- that, the car itself, I think, was like uh, the, you know one of the biggest stars of the show. It should, it should be at the Smithsonian. <laughs> it should. I don't know what. Well, the thing is, there is a, every year. Yeah, they got a new Corvette. It was never explained. It was supposed to be the same car, <laughs> but like in 1961, it was a 61 model. Then in 62, it was a 62 model. I, w- I wonder who their um, sponsor was. Were they doing commercials for the uh, the model? I'm curious. No, no. I, I, well, I'm guessing Corvette must have sponsored it. I'm I, sure they must have given them the car. But yeah. it's one of those shows that you know I discovered it in the 90s when I started reading Kerouac and I started yeah. reading you know when I when I was lofty in my 20s and was reading this highbrow <laughs> literature uh I, somebody said you should watch route 66 it's just like on the road you know and uh I, I i couldn't believe it and now it's just great that it's out again and i hope it's rediscovered and i hope eventually that it'll come back to uh regular television it should be in uh, reruns but 
well, for the time being, you know, you've got the whole set if you want to get it. And I, I just want to always, in, you know, invite people to, you know, Nick at Night, go to their website, and you can leave comments, and you, people can start saying, why don't you screen this show, air it, it's a great series, this is what we want to see, but you can get the box set. Right. So, listen, we encourage civil disobedience. Of course. Go to, go to the website and uh, tell Nickelodeon that you want it on. It, it's, it's just, it's a great show waiting to be uh, rediscovered, and uh, hopefully that process begins with this exclusive film and video report.